Hello, everyone, and welcome to class. Today, we're going to talk about anthropology. Of course, the first thing we're going to talk about is what is anthropology? We have a couple of goals for this lecture. We are, of course, going to start off with what is anthropology, um, but then we'll also cover the subfields of anthropology and a little bit of applied anthropology. Um, if you'd like to follow along, I recommend getting this textbook, Anthropology, What Does It Mean to Be Human by Robert Lavenda and Emily Schultz. Um, this will cover similar topics to chapter one, also titled, What is Anthropology? You see, we have some consistent messaging here today. Hey, look, it's that same question again. So, Anthropology is really at its core, it's the study of humans. Um, but there are a couple different ways we go at this. Primarily within the field of anthropology, we mean we're talking about human behavior, human societies, or the human past. Um, anthro, that root means um, man, and ology, of course, is the study of. What unites us here, because so many things in our everyday lives are about being human and what makes us human, but really what unites us here in the field of anthropology is this central question. What makes us human? And that's probably the core fascination that you will find most people who are drawn to the field of anthropology. This is what brought us here. Of course, you might be wondering like, well, but a lot of things examine our humanity. So what makes anthropology unique? You know, we think about this in philosophy, <laughs> the entire field of art is exploring our humanity. Um, in the field of anthropology, we like to think of ourselves as being holistic. So we are looking at the effect of multiple things combined and how that results in our humanity. Usually this is referring to society, culture, power dynamics within any of these. Um, other things that come up a lot are cross-cultural comparison. So looking at what happens in multiple different cultures and remembering that not all cultures have the same values. Um, a lot of it is also how we came to be. So an evolutionary look of how our ancestors were different in the past and what path they took to be like we are today. Anthropology is also field-based no matter what subfield you're talking about. So it's a lot of going out there, doing field work to inform your questions. Um, of course, we're still talking a little general. And um, what's kind of interesting about anthropology is it's a little bit of a lot of things. So there's a little bit of social science in it. Um, but there's also some natural science. There's a lot of just hard biology we talk about and also a little bit of humanities. Um, one of the reasons I love anthropology so much is this interdisciplinary nature. So the uniting feature of anthropology is that we are talking about humans, but there's so many different ways we can look at humans. And that's where this interdisciplinary thing comes in. So we might look at what makes us human with using slightly different types of investigation. And that's where these kind of different subfields of anthropology um, come in because they look at it in a slightly different way. One of the most important things you will encounter when you're talking about anthropology is the idea of culture. Um, so it helps to define that off the bat. So culture is the customs, art, social institutions, or achievements of a particular nation, people, or social group. Usually the things that we talk about when, we're, uh, when we mean culture is what are the behaviors or beliefs, the relationships, and the material objects that are created by a culture. Of course, looking at any of these, they can be very complex and there's lots of different things that goes into them, but these are the main categories that we're talking about when we mean culture. What do people do? What do people think? the relationships between other people, and of course, the physical objects that we create in our society. So now that we have a broad understanding of anthropology as a whole, let's now look at the subfields of anthropology. Um, I am an American anthropologist. I was trained in the American um, school. And in American anthropology, we have this thing called the four subfields. Um, they're represented here. Take a moment. Can you guess what they are? If you haven't been able to guess, 
First, we have linguistics, then we have archaeology, next we have sociocultural anthropology, and lastly, biological or physical anthropology. So let's look at these one by one and get a deeper look at what they are. First, we have biological anthropology, and this happens to be the subfield with which I am trained, so I know a little bit more about this subfield here. Um, biological anthropology is, of course, exactly what it sounds like. It's the study of the biology and behaviors of humans. But there are so many different ways you can go with this. So some people study the fossil record. Other people might study anatomy just of modern humans. But we can look at human evolution, the adaptations humans have, our behavior. Um, our, we can look at the relationships to other primates or primate behavior, um, human genetics. And there's also a really interesting field of forensic science and that um, helps out with a lot of legal cases as well. Um, just like the field of anthropology as a whole, biological anthropology is also interdisciplinary because again our uniting factor is we are looking at humans. We're just looking at it from a biological lens. So we take a little bit of primatology, which is also a field in its own right, um, a little bit of molecular biology that helps us out with all of our genetic studies, and a lot of geology and archaeology when we are trying to interpret the fossil record. Um, there is so much fun stuff here. Uh, I mean, I'm totally biased because this is my subfield. You can see all my little primates behind me. Um, but there are so many wonderful things we can talk about. But of course, biological anthropology is not the only cool subfield out there. Um, next, we have cultural anthropology. Here you can might actually hear it called by a couple different names. You might also hear sociocultural anthropology or just straight up social anthropology or ethnology. These are, you know, slightly different terms, but they do mean broadly the same thing. This is the study of human societies and culture. So a cultural anthropologist, they might look at clothing or food, or kinship, gender roles, the social structure, and of course the power dynamics but amongst all these things. So the structure, social structure is a, and kinship are a huge thing when we're talking about cultural anthropology. And of course, it is the material goods and beliefs. Um, field work is, of course, important for all fields of anthropology. But I would argue that field work is maybe like a little bit more central to cultural anthropology. Because a lot of cultural anthropologists will go and live in other communities for years to do their studies. Um, and I think it there are definitely ways this can be used to fetishize other cultures, and we do not want to do that. But when it is done correctly, this is a really nice way for uh, cross-cultural exchange so we can learn about each other, so we can all respect one each other a little bit more. Um, there's a couple different words you might hear. Oh, I animated these slides weird. Um, you might hear cultural anthropologists called ethnographers. Um, so that's because we have ethnographies. They, that's when you write a description of one cu culture, but you can also write an ethnology, and that is when you compare two or more cultures. Um, so if you've heard those words before, that is what they're referring to. Um, part of the reason I actually got into anthropology at all is my mom's cousin is a cultural anthropologist, and she spent many years in West Africa doing her field work. So I have great respect for all of this. Our next subfield here is linguistic anthropology, which is actually different from linguistics. So um, Linguistic anthropology is now we've combined a little bit of anthropology and a little bit of linguistics because we are now studying language in its cultural context. So really we're looking at the cultural meaning of words. Um, dialects of power is also a, an interesting thing that comes up a lot here because we're looking at the meaning of language and how it relates to that culture. And from the viewpoint of linguistic anthropology is you really cannot separate words from their cultural context. There are unfortunately fewer interesting pictures um, about linguistic anthropology, but you do get a lot of these fun um, graphics about trying to convey. We have this communication where we're trying to convey meaning and the person you're talking to may or may not understand it. Um, I took a couple of linguistics classes when I was an undergrad, and I still remember things from them. They were some of the most transformative parts of my undergraduate experience, remembering that everyone has a dialect, even though there isn't really 
a name for the type of American accent I have. Mine is a little bit more generic and doesn't isn't as distinctively named as maybe a Southern dialect or a Brooklyn dialect. I still have one. It just isn't named in our cultural sphere. And understanding that there's a difference between prescriptive and descriptive rules of language. And of course, we have our last subfield here of archaeology. Um, so archaeology is frequently paired with biological anthropology because they're both kind of looking at the past, studying fossils. Um, archaeology is the study of human history and prehistory through analysis of artifacts and physical remains in the fossil record. Um, so it's primarily preserved cultural objects, but it can also be the paleo environment. Um, what's interesting here is archaeology is more the actual excavation and the analysis of the material objects, archaeologists don't tend to analyze the fossils themselves. So this is where an archaeologist will pair up with a biological anthropologist, and the biological anthropologist will be at the site being like, I'm, I'm trying to not mess up your excavation because um, we're not really trained in that. Um, there are some people who do straddle the line and are trained in both archaeology and biological anthropology, but they are um, two separate fields here. Um, so we can see here's a couple different examples of some excavations. So we have a fossil, we have some pots here, and then we have this beautiful statue that's emerging from the earth. But more than just these four subfields, we can also apply anthropology. And this is where we use anthropology for areas of social need. So the two most common ones are medical anthropology and development anthropology. So thinking about um, how we interact with medicine and how that affects us, or how we can use our knowledge from anthropology to help developing nations. Um, I put cyber anthropology here at the bottom um, because Sometimes people will consider this a subset of cultural anthropology, so looking at modern culture and how we interact with technology, but we can also apply that to the real world. I've heard an urban legend, so I'm not entire, entirely sure how true this is, but I've heard that some anthropologists were involved in the original formation of Twitter because it was looking at how people actually interact with technology and coming up with this social platform that is this behemoth. I still remember when my institution went virtual for the first time at the beginning of the pandemic, it was announced via Twitter. No official staff email. It was Twitter. And the most hilarious thing is it was also the first time the deans of my college were notified. Just like, what you doing, man? Thankfully, now we get official memos via staff email and not Twitter. That was hugely unprofessional. Anyway, um, I took this lovely graphic here from our textbook, um, just helps us understand um, and kind of remember what all of these different fields are. So we have biological anthropology, cultural anthropology, um, linguistic anthropology, and archaeology. So biological anthropology, so human biology, um, anything around the biology of our fossil ancestors, primatology, cultural anthropology is a lot of kinship, culture, um, our material life and what we do with it. Um, linguistic anthropology is, of course, linguistics and about how um, language interacts if, within that context of culture. And archaeology is looking at um, history or prehistory and cultural artifacts that we are digging up from the ground. Um, of course, we can apply anthropology primarily through medical and developmental anthropology and a little bit of urban anthropology as well. Another important thing to think about, um, and one that's really important to consider when we're talking about anthropology is ideas of cultural relativity. So when you are looking at anthropology, and I think this is one of the most powerful things I get from this field, is we need to remember that not all cultures do the same things, and not all cultures have the same values. So different cultures will have different values, and that's okay. Unfortunately, this is some of the uh, origin of strife, because we'll have different cultures clashing because they do have these different values. And sometimes it's hard for people to respect others that do have different beliefs. And I encourage you to respect that 
not everyone is going to see the world in the same way you do. So for example, some people eat bugs. Some people take off their shoes when indoors. Some people cover their heads indoors. Um, there's this difference between individual thinking versus collective thinking. Maybe you do some of these things and maybe you don't. Maybe people have thought you're weird for doing or not doing some of these things. Um, none of these examples are inherently good or bad. They're just ways to interact with the world. Um, so if you've ever heard a or seen a cultural custom and you've like had a negative jerk reaction, be like, oh, we don't do that. I encourage you to not say that in the future. Instead, if you want to describe something that happens where you come from, instead say, that is not the custom in this tribe. Um, this is some words of wisdom from my mom's cousin, Dr. Zavarua, um, who did field work in West Africa and is, of course, one of the reasons that I'm in anthropology in the first place. Um, my mom is a little bit younger than her cousin, and she, my mom was like a little bit nervous when she was pregnant with me. And she was like, how, how do I raise, you know, a good child? What, what, what should I say? Any parenting advice? And this was her w word of wisdom. So instead of saying, we don't do that here, say, that is not the custom in this tribe. So if you ever need to share some knowledge with some people and help someone acclimate, here is what my suggestion to you. Of course, now is the time to test yourself. Can you answer what is anthropology? And of course, what are the different subfields of anthropology and can you briefly describe them all? <music>